Hello and welcome everyone. Uh, once again to Meta Week, I'm Maria Vovchok. I'm ambassador at Blockchain Association of Ukraine, a journalist in the space, and also organizer of blockchain conferences here in Dubai. Please give it up right now to Eli Taranto, Chief Business Development Officer at Equi Bank, Ch Chief Business Development Officer Equi Fi, and uh, also led marketing at Altor Capital in the past, Blockchain Accelerator. Please give him a big hand. Ellie Toronto today at Meta Week and today we're going to talk about I believe really one of the really exciting topics in uh, the world of Metaverse with a parad which is a paradigm shift for digital asset management how Metaverse fuels DeFi so before we'll start Ali uh, by the way is it correct when I say Equify or should I say EQI-Fi how should Bank it? and Equify so I can use, yeah, I can spell it, like pronounce yes. it in both yes. ways. Because for me, it's very important, by the way, to pronounce every name correctly. Thank you so much. So uh, before we'll continue, please raise your hand. Who is, in this case, is at the blockchain conference for the first time ever? Is there anyone? One, two. Please don't be shy, because in that case, we would like, in that case, we will be able to help those people who are coming for the first time help to understand what is going on in the world of DeFi and Metaverse world, I would say, Metaverse slash Web3 world. I actually believe that Grigori will join us really fast, but um, in that case, meanwhile, we'll definitely, I think Ellie will do this as a kind of fireside, fireside chat. Okay, so before we'll continue, Ali, please, for those people, because I know that like, maybe you met a lot of people today on stage, not only on stage, I mean, before the stage. Um, if somebody would have to remember you, like by your business qualities, what do you believe are your, uh, let's say, the best business qualities which help you to be successful at what you do? I'd summarize probably in one word, it's perseverance. Perseverance? Yeah. Oh, I Not know this quitting. word. I remember this from one TD uh, TAD talk. Which one? Mm, I right now cannot recall the name of neuroscientist, but she was telling that perseverance is the thing which actually helps you even when you fail, even when you feel like... I think I saw that one. It was a neurobiologist or something. Yes. 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 I forgot her name, but yeah, you're yeah. right. Yeah. So you actually watched it and also this is like probably one of your... I did, abilities. yes. And I, I related to her a lot, actually. I, I do agree. It is about perseverance. Okay, sure. so one thing that probably you should definitely remember uh, about being in this space, in every kind of space, but specifically here as well, is perseverance. And I'll tell you why, and I, I believe Ali will also explain. Whenever you feel that some of the topics uh, in this space are a bit confusing to remember, you still need to keep it up, you still need to keep it going, keep learning, and in that case, after some time, you feel you understand it, right? Absolutely. It's all about sort of digging, knowing that if you don't know about it today, it's only about a second away on the internet. It's always available to you. Information is, you know, we live in the information age, so nothing is far away. So, uh, by the way, please remember perseverance is one of the things. Can you add something, something that the audience will remember you by? M maybe there is something that the audience should definitely know something about Ali. I'd say it's probably perseverance again. I think, um, uh, in, in my heart, I'm a business development officer, and I think for a BD uh, person, perseverance is key. So trying everything and every avenue possible to, to get the job done. Sure. So, Ali, um, let's right now wrap it up a bit uh, if we're talking about the market last year. Because if you analyze 2021, so it was the time when the crypto market hit $3 billion market cap. And we remember how China was banning, imposing a complete ban on crypto mining, crypto trading, and in general. And we could see how actually over the last couple of years, the trends which were dominating in the space, dominating the space were like appearing. So first, it was like a lineup of DeFi. Then later on, it kind of switched to NFTs. And after that, we could see like the metaverse has emerged as a kind of, I would say, um, the ultimate goal for many projects, or is it true? If we would like to find the best convergence for all of these three terms, from your perspective, what would it be? So if you could elaborate on the question a little, a little bit so I could... Yeah, so in that case, for example, we're talking about um, like three trends, three major trends, especially for those who are coming here for the first time. How, 
from your perspective, when the, when there is where there is like convergence between these type of trends in the best possible way? I think it's definitely finance. Mm -hmm. So I think it's um, we will find that whatever the metaverse is, whatever it will be, um, whatever it is now, it's always going to be about having the ability to pay for goods and services. From your perspective, what is metaverse for you? Like, how do you feel it? Not like from the perspective of a term, but how do you see it? I think it really depends on the psychology of every single person. For somebody, it'll be an escape. escape. For, for others, it'll be a business opportunity. Uh, for somebody else, it'll be a bit of fun. Um, and certainly what we're seeing now is there's a different metaverse for everybody. For every type of personality, there's something out there. And that's great. What about yourself? For somebody, it's escape. For somebody, it's a business opportunity. For yourself, Ali? Definitely a business opportunity. Okay. And a bit of fun. Can't forget about that. Okay. I, I believe in that case, there is no, no probably like bigger, very big um, maybe opportunities if there's no fun from this perspective. Can you please tell us if, for example, like a lot of people as, we, as well here, they are also have learned something definitely about Metaverse, NFTs, and DeFi. What do you believe are the, like I would say, the general biggest mi misconceptions that the community can have right now about Metaverse, DeFi, and NFTs? I think a lot of people think um, the Metaverse is a Trojan horse. Um, and I've heard that opinion quite a lot. Mm -hmm. That I'm not sure that's the case. I think it's a natural progression of technology and mm -hmm. where we were 20 years ago and where we are now. Um, I don't have any critique um, for the metaverse. Uh, I think it, it is what it is. Um, again, it's important. Uh, we're all here about you know business opportunities, I think. Um, it's about understanding what it is who you are, what you can bring to it, to this new market. You know, we're back in 2017 where, you know, um, the ICOs were launching and everybody was doing this and that. And the biggest question was, do you really need blockchain? How does blockchain apply here? And I think the, the time right now is for everybody to ask, what can you do in the metaverse? What are you there for? What are you here for? Um, how, how good are you there? Can you transcend who you are, what you do, what you produce in the metaverse? And that's the key question everybody should be asking. Mm -hmm. Can you, in that case, uh, what do you think is the biggest misconception about NFTs? Because, again, um, I'll tell you honestly, like, from what I heard so far, some of the people, they're like, perceiving this as a kind of a bit different purpose. Somebody, uh, like, I heard like really different explanations. But in your perception, what conception we should, we should forget about when somebody is telling you, oh, NFT is this. So what is wrong about that? I thought I knew everything about NFTs until two weeks ago. Yeah. Somebody told me they nft Santa. nft Santa? nft Santa Claus. Uh -huh. um, really? And, yeah, they actually nft Santa. Why? How did they explain? How, why, why did they see that? They went uh, to the Orthodox Church, mm -hmm. and they asked permission from, from a pope uh -huh. whether they would grant them permission yeah. to NFT a saint. Okay. And the pope gave that permission oh, of really? that particular church, the, the priest. Can I ask you which city? I, I, I think it was somewhere in Bulgaria. Okay. So, some, somewhere there. Uh -huh. But it doesn't matter because the, that in itself is pretty unique, and, and, and a religious authority granted that, that right. Oh my God. Um, so I think... So are they right now minted on open sea or where else? I don't know whether in heaven and hell, what's going to happen to them after yeah. <laughs> where, the, where they are, but uh, okay. it, 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 it happened. I think they're in open sea, to be honest, That's uh -huh. probably where they all are. Okay. But I think, you know, when you're asking the question, what to do about NFTs, who they are, um, rather what it is and, and what to do, the key is who's selling it, who's auctioning it, because the, 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 the question then becomes, are they laundering money? Mm -hmm. Is it an art project? Is it innovation or is it something else? So it's always about the person, just like with the metaverse. It's always about who's doing it. Okay, can you tell, like, let's from NFTs to metaverse. Do you believe that metaverse is, 
from this perspective, is more real than the real world. I think it'll become that. Why? I think because people have dreams, uh, people have um, traumas, um, and both will be relived in that metaverse. So how can you think... In those metaverses. Okay, how do you think metaverse and from this perspective can help? From that perspective? I think it'll have a big application in psychology and psychiatry. Um, I think, um, can, you, can you hear me? Yes. I think it will definitely help people overcome a lot of their problems. I think it'll help peace. I think it'll help business. Um, I think it'll help us become a new type of humanity. Mm -hmm. um, because, you know, if, if, if you look at a metaverse where, um, you know, like, like there's some which are very, very, I guess, they focus on things that are negative, put it that way. Mm -hmm. And there are some that focus on things that are positive. And I've read statistics that those that focus on things that are negative have less customers, less users, than those that focus on the positive. Which means that human beings um, at heart um, strive and, and get attracted to and, and come to things that are positive. I, I totally support that, but it's specifically when we want to get some services, we want to be happy about that. Hmm. And by the way, this is a really good example because one of the examples that I also want to pay is about the Philippines. So right now, a lot of people in the Philippines, why Gamify, for example, has become really popular there because you can, say, you can at the same time have fun, you can play, and you can earn. So you can actually earn even more often, you're, you're, having, you're having fun, and you can earn at the same time better like amount of money, like which is bigger amount of money, uh, than for example when you're doing some physical job. But so do you believe that gamify from this perspective can be kind of a uh, entry point for metaverse and web3 adoption? And uh, do you believe it's going to overwhelm like the majority as well of working class in different countries because the world there, and also the ability to earn, will be much more attractive than in the real world. I agree with you, Kulia, definitely, for sure. It'll be attractive because it's easier. It'll create new ways of, 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 of earning, of, of creating value, of, of selling that value. We don't know what they're going to be, what, what those ways are going to be today, but you know, they're, they're a step away tomorrow. I, I think we may be days away from a revolution. We don't know, but it'll happen. People will, people in startups and, 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 and companies will think of new ways to, to create, um, new ways people can earn and things like that. If that, if, if, if I'm answering your question correctly, I'm, I may have misunderstood. Yeah, but I'm also, I'm also curious how this, from your perspective, revolution will look like. Sorry? Revolution will look like from this perspective um, when it happens. That's a really good question. I was thinking about that the other day. And I think the one thing that we're all missing in the metaverse is integration. So doors into various metaverses. Mm -hmm. So if you're in Decentraland, how do you go to Sensorium? How do you go to, uh, I don't know, Sin City, for example? And that's what's missing. And I think once we have ways that, that will allow us to move from planet to planet, from planet to planet, uh -huh. from metaverse to metaverse, that will be the day where we can say that opportunities are limitless. Mm -hmm. Actually sounds interesting. I believe that, but also, do you believe, can we in that case, obviously also travel not only, like, but also in time, not only in space? I think that once Elon Musk completes his Neuralink project, we're going to learn a lot more things that we know right now about the brain, mm -hmm. about the soul, about the human condition, about who we are, um, maybe even where we came from, where we're going, because that electronic uplink into the subconscious, that connection between the human brain and the supercomputer and the imposition of that onto the metaverse um, that the possibilities are, are, are endless or limitless. That's true. If, for example, you had a choice and you could actually travel back in time in the metaverse and you could have a dinner with any person, dead or, li or alive, with whom would you like to have a metaverse, dinner in metaverse, for example, or have a side, a fireside chat or have a long conversation? Whom would you like to interview, maybe? Um, definitely Leonardo da Vinci. Why? 
Oh, interesting. I, I've, I've looked at some of his inventions, mm -hmm. and they're, uh, you know, apart from being an artist, um, he, is, he was an inventor. Um, and what he, he created um, was absolutely phenomenal. Some of the things that Nikola Tesla actually used in his concepts and designs came from uh, Leonardo da Vinci. And I think it goes um, together with what I said before about the Neuralink connection to the metaverse. We can access parts of our brain information that um, is not available to us at our current, say, vibrational state, um, but we can possibly access it with the help of technology um, later on. So access the same types of info that, that, that Da Vinci was able to access, that Tesla was able to access um, with the help of tech. And I would definitely love to hear how he did it back then. It's really interesting. By the way, I'm, I'm really curious how it would look like, like from this perspective. Who do you think might be the Leonardo da Vinci right now in terms of metaverse development? So, uh, who? Do you think that there is a person, I'm not saying like Leonardo da Vinci because he was really outstanding personality, but do you believe that there are like people who might be having the same vision like as Leonardo da Vinci had at his time? I think there's only one person and that's Elon Musk, yeah. no doubt. Yeah, but in that case, maybe you know someone who might be not so, for example, uh, he's not so very well famous, maybe from this perspective. Well, if there is, let me know and I'll hire you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's talk right now about metanomics, so-called, because we actually mentioned one of the business bigger opportunities will be, of course, in Metaverse world in the, from the financial perspective. Let's call, um, right now, quite often the economics of Metaverse, they call it metanomics. Uh, and where do you believe in which market areas will it bring the biggest opportunities? The metaverse. Yes. Metanomics, let's call it. I think it's going to be payments mm -hmm. because we live uh, in a capitalist society and the, the, the process of shifting, receiving, sending value for goods and services has to be fixed on the blockchain wherever it is um, and it has to be accounted for. And I think without that, the metaverse will not exist. There's no, if there's no profit motive, there's no progress. So in my view, that will be at least initially where it'll happen because that, that's the backbone, that's the infrastructure. I've actually seen a very interesting diagram in 2017 mm -hmm. when we were uh, hitting the ICO boom and I've never seen it since. And all it had is investment flows of JP Morgan, Goldman Sachs and all the major banks mm -hmm. and all they were investing in while they were dissing blockchain and crypto was infrastructure. And I think that's, you know, they're, they're doing exactly the same thing now, but they're not doing it secretly. It's out in the open. So I think payments is where we're going to see it, which is why Ekibank and Ekify are at the forefront of, of, of this today. Can you dwell upon this? Yeah, so um, we actually had the idea to open bank branches in the metaverse uh, before uh, JPM did it. Um, oh, yeah. Because they made a huge announcement about yes, that. Yes, yes. But they only opened the lounge. What we're, we're going to now be doing is opening up bank branches in various metaverses and interlinking them all together. So um, in practice, we probably are the first bank in the metaverse per se. So in this case, you kind of, you a lot uh, invested into interoperability. You worked on power chains from this perspective, how it is. I mean, in terms of interoperability between metaverses. Right. So we're going to be bridging between a lot of them. Uh, well, our tech team is going to be doing that. Um, I'll be honest, I'm not very tech oriented, but, but, but our tech team is incredible. So what we're going to be doing is cross, cross bridging to some of these chains. We're going to be opening up again those branches per metaverse. We're going to see how that's going to happen. A lot of these are pilots, but we do know that there's demand. We do know that um, people understand that they need it today. Um, we know how we're going to do it. I'm obviously not going to describe it here, but uh, there is a roadmap and it's already underway. Okay, I'm, I'm just curious, the only thing, uh, which platforms are you bridging between in this, from this perspective? Um, well, right now, um, Equify, our sister project, is on Ethereum, but we are going to be working with a lot of them. We, we have a MOU signed with Tezos. Mm -hmm. uh, we've signed a couple of others and I, we will be announcing them sort of this year. Okay, so when you actually mentioned about your project, about your company, I actually, I'm observing quite a lot of right now companies which 
under the roof of decentralized autonomous organization, which is, by the way, one of the, as well, biggest trends this year. Uh, they're building their metaverses. Obviously, they are minting NFTs within, like, within their space, within the metaverse space. And at the same time, for payments, they're using decentralized finance. Um, and actually, like, quite a lot of them, they are similar. From your perspective, and in this case, I'm not telling you like to tell how you're different, but please, can you name, even without mentioning the names, but which from these business models do you find the most successful ones and which might be in the future like a failure? In terms of metaverses? Yes. Oh, definitely Decentraland. Yeah, Decentraland, but also there is Sandbox, there is, they are talking yeah. about four, like the major one, Sandbox, Decentraland, and others. Um, from your perspective, why? And who might be, from this perspective, from the other perspective, failing? I think Decentraland, again, because they're the ones that have the most completed up-to-date platform today. So they, they're not just an MVP, uh, which is, I think, the reason why JPM you know, chose them. Uh, let's be honest, it is what it is. It's a great team. Uh, they have a great investor behind them. Um, they had, you know, the guys really know what they're doing. Uh, we've been speaking to them for a while. Um, not, again, not going to publicly announce anything, but uh, they have a great opportunity in the market right now. They're early. They, they were the first to build, the first to launch something cool. Um, so, yeah. And they are one of the, like, probably one of the most successful wire sale, selling real estate yes. in Decentraland. And actually about Decentraland, also, also about real estate in Metaverse, we'll also will be talking, talking tomorrow at Open Stage at one of our panels. But right now, let's go back to, let's call it like the best examples here. So the best example is there. Without naming them, whom do you think are offering nothing new in terms of Metaverse? Um, which business models are they using and why can they fail? I think the universe, uh, so the, well, the universe as well. By the way, metaverse, <laughs> the other universe. Um, content is king. So I think that and content's always been king. I think uh, you can instantly spot a scam or something that's not been done very professionally based on the way they approach content. Um, if the content is bad, if it's, you know, you, you can instantly spot something good for, for something not so professionally made. And I think um, there are a lot of projects out there like Sensorium, um, like Decentraland, which are fantastic. And it's all about content. If you have little stick figures running around, it's cool for a while, it's a nice little novelty, but it's not, you know, what, what will be um, top of the market in, in, in a month, in a year. Okay, is the metaverse strategy, which is used by decentralized, um, Decentraland, sorry, will it be used as well by Equify? Do you believe that this is the best option or do you come with even better metaverse strategy for the future of your company? So Equify and Equibank, we're payment systems providers. We provide the payments uh, option. Um, we are uh, must have for any metaverse that's serious, that, that, that's thinking globally again because every metaverse needs to have payments embedded within. Um, we're probably not gonna build a metaverse, although I don't know. We have a very creative marketing department and even more creative tech team. So they might wake me up tomorrow in the middle of the night and say we're building a metaverse, I don't know. Um, but I hope for some you know, advanced warning at least. But um, in terms of Equify, uh, we're gonna be continuing providing financial services to the metaverse. Uh, I believe we're the first and the only ones in the market right now to do so, and we're dedicated to providing top quality services and assistance to the crypto space in general. Thank you so much. Thank you. Ellie Taranto, Chief Business Development Officer at Equibank.